Hey, hi, it's been a long time since I was, uh, I did a, one of these 33 minute videos for Hai Young Zendo. Uh, it's been hot in the summer and it's just now starting to cool off a bit and I'm just moved to share some more. But I'm going to make a very long reading from a quote from Albert Einstein and in my opinion everything that needs to be said is said in this long quote and I'll try to be a good reader but I will share with you after I've finished reading this about how it just fit in with where this video was intended to go in the first place I didn't arrive at my understanding of the fundamental laws of the universe through my rational mind. Concerning matter, we have all been wrong. What we have called matter is energy, whose vibration has been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. Matter is spirit reduced to point of visibility. There is no matter. Time and space are not conditions in which we live, but modes by which we think. Physical concepts are free of creations of the human mind, and we are not, however it may seem, determined by the external world. Time does not exist. We invented it. Time is what the clock says. The distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. I think 99 times and find nothing. I stop thinking, swim in silence, and the truth comes to me. The intellect has little to do with the road to discovery. There comes a leap in consciousness. Call it intuition or what you will. The solution comes to you and you don't know how or why. A human being experiences himself, his thoughts, his feelings, as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion is kind of a prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circles of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. When something vibrates, the electrons of the entire universe resonate with it. Everything is connected. The greatest tragedy of human existence is the illusion of separateness. Reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. We are souls dressed up in the sacred biochemical garments of our bodies, are the instruments through which our souls play their music. When you examine the lives of the most influential people who have ever lived and walked amongst us, you discover one thread that winds through them all. They have been aligned first with their spiritual nature and only then with the physical self. The true value of human being can be found in the degree to which he has attained liberation from the self. The ancient knew something when which we seem to have forgotten. The more I learn of physics, the more I am drawn to metaphysics. One thing I have learned in a long life, that all of our science measured against reality is primitive and childlike. We still do not know one thousandth of one percent of what nature has revealed to us. It is entirely possible that behind the perception of our senses. Worlds are hidden of which we are unaware. I'm not an atheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. 
We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books. The common idea that I'm an atheist is based on a big mistake. Anyone who interprets my scientific theories this way did not understand them. Everything is determined, every beginning and ending, by forces over which we have no control. It is determined for the insect as well as the star. Human beings, vegetables are cosmic dust. We all dance to a mysterious tune intoned in the distance by an invisible piper. The religion of the future will be a cosmic religion. It will transcend personal God and avoid dogma and theology. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. Everything is energy and that is all there is to it. Match this frequency of the reality you want and you can help, you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not a philosophy, this is physics. I'm happy because I want nothing from anyone. I do not care about money. Decorations, titles, or distinctions mean nothing to me. I do not crave praise. I claim credit for nothing. A happy man is too satisfied with the present to dwell too much on the future. Six minutes and 45 seconds <laughs> to get through. Beautifully said. This is some summation of a hundred, two hundred and eighty half hour videos that I've done. This is the summation. He said it all in that longish quote. And I hope the real impact. You know, I read that to you for me as much as for you, just like doing all of this work has been for me as much as for you. It's been my attempt at sharing. And Albert, Mr. Einstein, bless you because it's taken me many many hours to say what you said in six minutes and 45 seconds of my reading time i hope i did it justice uh, and this is where i am now right here with this everything that Albert had to say. And this fits in with my topic for today because I was going to talk about, before I found this, before Duger shared with me on Facebook, Duger Parish, thank you Duger, shared with me on Facebook, my topic for today was random thoughts and the elusiveness random thoughts and elusiveness, and a thought that just beyond. You have a thought, but you can't quite grasp it out of the reach of the mind at that current moment in time. And when I was having these random thoughts, when I was just listening to the winds that blew through my mind without trying to evaluate, without trying to source, to sort, without trying to even incorporate, just come and go, come and go, as life does. And I got stuck. I was so smooth and just everything coming and going and just everything was great. And then I had a thought, ah! But it was just beyond the reach of my mind. 
tip of your tongue would be another way to put it. Just beyond the reach of my mind. And I had to wait. It's been four, five, five months since I did one of these, I guess, an eternity, a long, hot summer that we're t we, we are burdened with or blessed with, depending on how you feel it. Too hot for me this year, this summer. But here is this elusive, random thought that was beyond the reach of my mind because I had to wait until I could read this from Albert. And I want to read the last sentence, the last paragraph, because it's particularly where I am right this moment as I sit in front of you. I'm happy because I want nothing from anyone. I do not care about money, decorations, titles, or distinctions mean nothing to me. I do not care about praise. I claim credit for nothing. A happy man is too satisfied the, with the present to dwell too much on the future. And that's where I stand as I smile at you. That's where I sit as I smile at you. Don't want, don't need anything from anybody. How could we, when the universe has gifted us with all? Not only has it gifted us with all, but the gift allowed us to come to the understanding that that's all that there is to existence, is everything. Everything is all that exists. <laughs> and everything simply is the acceptance of the here and now, the acceptance of being fulfilled, gratified, sustained, taken care of, provided for. The grace of the universe. Learning that the constant state of existence is joy. Sit on that for a minute. Joy is the constant state of existence. It's right there for us. All we have to do is breathe, let it in, embrace it, and accept that you can dwell in this joy despite, in spite of what the physical world seems to bring each day, each new challenge, each new problem, each new calamity, each new change, each new health challenge, all of these can be dealt with as they come and remain in a state of joy. I went through a period the last few weeks where I was meditating four hours a day. I like one hour increments, and let me make a little diversion here. I have a meditation timer that will count down from 60 minutes because I found for myself, and I recommend to others to, when they get themselves to an hour, that's the most productive time period for meditation and then after an hour you need to get up and stretch or some and I would a lot of times just reset the timer and go into hour number two but maybe stretch the legs straight the back everything is getting old <laughs> everything hurts but this drawn to this constant state of meditation 
and I'll share later. I have a lot to catch up with, and it's going to be hard to, to go back where I was five months ago, which is what I want to do, and, and then lead up to where I am now. But of course, where I am now, <laughs> I'll be somewhere else then. <laughs> yes. So to be available. There's several things that's required of us. Acceptance. Acceptance of constant change. Acceptance of whatever is on your plate at that moment. And to accept means that you surrender to the inevitably changing universe. It's like waves and things just come at you, wash over you. Oncoming wave. Such is life. But you can embrace it in a constant state of joy. And let me distinguish. I started on this, I think, the last video I shared that. Joy and happiness are two separate things. We strive for happiness. Everybody says, gotta be happy, gotta be happy. But the opposite of happiness is sadness. And both of them are equally so. In order to have happiness, you have to have sadness. To have night, you have to have day. To have love, you must have hate. You have to have in the dualistic maya, the dualistic illusion, you need the illusion of opposites. And then you learn it's a continuum. Then you learn that it's not, it's non-dualistic, not two, just one. That's two. <laughs> one of one is two. Not two, just one. But joy, joy is a constant. You might say, above joy exists bliss. And I've shared before that bliss is a condition, condition that I rarely get an opportunity to enjoy. It comes in flashes. Bliss is intense. I always feel that when I'm in a blissful state, that it couldn't be, it can't be continual and me stay in this physical body. It just just couldn't. There's too much energy involved. I would implode or explode. I would cease to exist in this physical form. So I get a glimpse of bliss and I say, oh, that's beautiful. But I, I relish that <laughs> in the next realm where that I don't have to maintain a physical body. But right now I need this form. I've got work to do. I'm at probably, this is probably 276, so 24 plus 7, 33. I have about 74 more 30 minute videos I want to do before I've completed the cycle of my YouTube sharing. So, a lot of work. And there's new developments that I want to share, but I do want to kind of keep this chronological. So, even though I wasn't, the conditions weren't right for me in my stuffy little room, which I have to shut the air up, close the fans, close the windows from the ambient sounds outside, or else it would be overwhelming, to share with you in this format that's such a beautiful format. I started transcribing, you know, I went, I started from teaching number one and tried to, started transcribing and then I stopped after seeing how difficult it was to transcribe even a half an hour video and I had 274, am I doing the math right? I'm not even doing the math right. Let's start again, 111, 111 is 222. 
this last incarnation of my 111, I'm on number 74. So 222 plus 74 is 296, which means that I only have 37 more videos to go. <laughs> but I've done them in cycles. So 111, to be three, 111, three times is 333, my magic mystical number. So we were talking about joy. I can live in a constant state of joy. And it doesn't mean that I won't be grumpy, that something won't be annoying, that the daily grind, that I'll have to do something that I don't really want to do, or none of that. But it just supersedes all of these are These are the things that I have to do, I have to perform to stay, to participate, to be a full participant in this life I was gifted with. I have chores, responsibilities, like put the trash up, cook dinner, wash dishes, miss my wife who's in Taipei right now. I have to f feed the kitties. I have to, I have to do a lot of things. But none of them precludes my sense of joy. So it's fun to look back where I was four or five months ago when I was having these random thoughts, when there was an elusiveness still. I have to celebrate that elusiveness and that's why I'm sharing it with you because since that time things have, let's just say for now, have become a lot less elusive. And at four months ago, five months ago, six months ago, that elusive thought, that something on the tip of my tongue, that elusive thought that was escaping me, was tantalizing, teasing. And I, see my brow? I wrinkled my brows, even repeating it. But see the smile, the wrinkles recede, because then I just said, well, so what? It eludes me right now, but my old caveat, I know what I need to know when I need to know it. And that covers all bases for me. So I can just kind of relax the shoulders, kick back, enjoy my life as it finds me, the weather's has started to cool. This is kind of maybe our Indian summer. Uh, and I know Taiwan. <laughs> we'll enjoy this. It'll be a teaser. We'll enjoy this just long enough. And then we'll have a couple more weeks of really hot weather. And well, that will be our autumn. <laughs> and we'll go straight into winter. Yeah. Again circumstances beyond my control. I just have been here long enough to witness them. And just wanted to share that nothing is insurmountable. Even our egos can be seen as the charlatans they truly are. To misdirect the trickster, the greatest trickster of all. And all traditions have talked about the trickster. And I have discovered that the trickster for all of us is our own mind that created this false narrative, this idea that we're separate and divided. <laughs> when we're Quite the opposite is what's so. We're all united. We're all one. So even the trickster, the greatest trickster, the ego, can be, will succumb. That's a better way to put it. Will succumb because it's passive. It's not active. It's not action that you take. It's reception. So, it will recede. 
it will recede in importance. Your sense of self will become less and less of a driving force. And it's this passivity, apparent passivity, of acceptance, of surrender, of remembering, it's the process of remembering what you always knew, I call it remembering the forgotten. All of these come to a passive mind, a passive state of being. As I always say, we're not human doings. There's nothing to do. We're human beings, which simply means be. Be all that we are, that you are. Be all that we are. Just be. In my culture, this Western culture of it's actions that are celebrated as achievements and like decoration, money, toys are the measurement of man, titles, praise, distinction, and credit. Claiming credit for thinking of something, isn't that bizarre? That we would be so limited in our perception that we actually thought we know anything, and especially that we discovered something, or that we thought of something new. Nothing's new under the sun. Is couldn't be more true. So I'm sitting here in my blue shirt with my green stripes, sharing with you that true contentment, peace comes acceptance comes surrender comes and the reward for these non-efforts because they say you can't try to do anything you can't strive Surrender, which is another, a nice way to say giving up, which is what all of us have to do at some point. We give up the ego. We give up the fear of being wrong. We give up the fear of being misunderstood. We give up the fear of being disliked. We give up the fear of what the future will bring. We give up the fear of death. We give up the fear of our health going bad. Surrendering up, giving up. We have to accept that nothing happens until we learn to be open, to be accepting, to be willing, to be enthusiastic, to embrace the opportunity that this life has provided us to reunite, to remember the forgotten, the unknown, to remember what we've always known, the oneness. So all those random thoughts, it's entertaining. It's entertaining. And random thoughts, they can be on two levels. There's the monkey mind level, this kind of blah, 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 blah. Then there's the um, big, the mind with the big M, the capital mind, the spiritual mind that ponders on bigger questions than the monkey mind. The monkey mind is chatter that doesn't matter. The mind with the capital M that's being receptive, that's trying to open, 
that's trying to know the unknowable, basically. <laughs> trying to stretch, living in a seemingly dualistic world, and stretching our mind to understand that opposites are actually just different points of the, spe the sphere three-dimensional after all, of the sphere of oneness. So fear is something to work on and then to surrender. Nice deep breath. So now, I'm having less and less random thoughts. My thoughts seem to be, it's almost like a download, okay? Being downloaded. It's happening so rapidly, it's downloading, downloading, downloading. And then it needs complete, and during this downloading period, mostly happens in, well, primarily happens in meditation. That's why I was meditating for four hours a day for two weeks solid double what I normally meditate and now for two weeks it seems like I haven't been able to sit in that chair and meditate at all because I've been processing that download is so massive it's so massive that it's taking time to process so I really don't have any <laughs> any time to worry about random thoughts and if it's out of the reach of my mind, so be it. Because I'm not, obviously, if I can't get it, I'm not ready to receive it. So we need to relax, we need to breathe, we need to enjoy. And mostly we need to just live in a constant state of joy. And that's enough. That's our gift to all sentient beings is living, it's our joy, is living in this universal joy. And just by doing so, being a role model, being an example for others to see and say, wow, I want some of what he's got. And yes, you're welcome to it because it's your birthright. It's your God-given right to live in joy. It's in your God-given right to embrace oneness, to discard the ego, to discard duality, to discard suffering, to discard fear, and most importantly, to discard the ego. Because it's not until you deal with the ego that you're really able to deal with life's biggest challenge for most of us, and that is the idea of dying. 